Hello there, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, and welcome back to the Talos Principle, and we are just about halfway through the desert land, and next up we'll probably be tackling Waterworld or something of that sorts. Anyway, here's the door. Let's take it. How many games are in your library that you've left unfinished? Do you give up when things get hard? Do you put things away when they no longer amuse you? I guess that's the point of games, amusement. But is there any real accomplishment if you're always shoving things to the side? You've solved a lot of puzzles here. I wonder, will you finish? Or will you just toss this game aside like everything else in your life? Well, I think if I'm in the middle of doing a walkthrough, then I have all the more reason to finish it. Let's read a couple of files for about 10 seconds because I don't actually bother reading all of them. If I have to read all of these by the end of this entire walkthrough, oh man, that's gonna be fun. My voice is going to be dead by the end of that, and then I won't be able to make any videos with commentary, and I'm sure a lot of people would like that. Here's also a ruined temple place. I'm not really sure why this is here. I guess it's sort of a callback to how there were sort of like abandoned temples in some earlier levels from the first world. There's even a sign. I don't know what sigil this one once had because it is laying down. And I'm not even sure if it even has a side of which you can read, which would be kind of entertaining if you could just like no clip through the world and actually read that. But instead, we're just going to do some puzzles. By the way, there's a star up there. Probably the worst star in the game, in my opinion. And you will see why. But in the meantime, let's think happy thoughts and actually solve a couple of puzzles. Such as starting off by getting this stuff over here so that way we can pick up a box and then a connector. And then we don't actually need this gate open as far as I know. So instead what we're gonna do is maybe go ahead and activate this fan actually. First of all, we have to actually place this on here for the time being. Well, the connection is kind of being blocked by this wall. You can easily connect it just like this, but this is only a temporary connector. We have to bring this on an adventure with us over to where the sigil is hidden because, well, there's a panel over here and obviously we don't have any jammers to work with, so instead we're just gonna put this down and collect the L block. And that is most excellent. Now, we now have access to the final world actually, but we won't be doing that for quite some time. And by that, I mean we won't be doing that until we finish the desert world, which hopefully won't take too long, but still quite some time, in essence. This being one of the problems, because it's part of the star thing. Yeah. But last episode, we were introduced to the, um, the copy machines. I just keep calling them copy machines. I'm not really sure if that's the... Yeah, I think they're called recorders, officially, but I like to call them copy machines, because they make copies of you. This one can be a little bit troublesome. There's a lot of buttons, and the thought process for this one can be a little bit complex. So, we're gonna take this just one step at a time. First of all, we're gonna detach this fan and place it on this button. And then we're gonna take this connector right here and place it here. We're gonna leave it like that for now, at least because we're going to have to have copies of the items to work with over here, for instance, and that's going to be quite a lot of fun. So, starting off, we're going to bring this item with us, this being the connector. Then we're going to bring the fan as well. And then I believe we might have access to actually bring the box over. The thing is, we have to get the box floating on a fan up there and then have it set so that way the connector is sitting on top of the box. Not only so that the fan is running, but also because we need to open that door from over there. And it's, oh my god, this puzzle is just crazy with this sort of stuff. It's, it's not fun. So, I think what we're gonna do instead is we're just gonna stand here for a little bit of time and wait and see if our main person in the future will actually be able to solve this rather large conundrum. And then if we figured it out correctly, which is like gonna take about maybe 20 more seconds or something, I don't know. I wanna give myself enough time to actually do this, otherwise I'm just gonna have to start the puzzle all over again. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take all the stuff back and place them on the buttons, so that way 
Now with the items in the present being used, we can just stand right here and let our future self go forward and collect the sigil. Presumably. This is how I'm seeing it's gonna work, and well, if it doesn't... I'm sorry. I'm just really bad at making walkthroughs of this game, it seems. Right, so... Starting off, we're gonna take this with us, we're gonna take this thing with us, and the doors are still open, thankfully, so... We might have a chance to do that. But we are gonna have to wait for Buddy over there to actually do something with his life, so... Yeah. We're just gonna move a couple things over, let him stand on the pressure plate. Come on, pal, you can do it. You were me a few seconds ago, and I know that you want to show all of your viewers, all ten of them, how to solve this puzzle. So, now you've finished doing what you want to do, we can actually take advantage of the situation, and just connect all of these together, so that way it's all running. That will open the door to the sigil all the way out there, and now we wait for me to finish solving the puzzle. Look at him, isn't he adorable? He's like trying to figure out, okay, um, I need to figure out where I'm gonna put this stuff now that I'm finished with it. See? He's figuring it out. There's a smart little android robot. Yes, you are. Thank you! And now we can collect the sigil. That one, not as easy as I sort of made it out to be. Like, even I just got stomped right there trying to figure it out. And most of my memory on how some of these puzzles worked, it kind of got a bit lost when I was trying to figure out how to get the star of this world. Which was a lot of fun. I must reiterate, that was quite an amazing star. Behind the Iron Curtain. Alright. I've done this puzzle enough times, so I'm pretty fluid with this one, I would say. I am about as fluid as dishwasher fluid would be when you go to wash dishes with the dishwashing device. Oh yeah. I'm very fluid and fluent with all of this stuff. I know exactly how puzzles work, and I'm very fluent in English. I know how to use the grammar properly. Clearly. Y you could probably see me using it from time to time. It's pretty great stuff, you know? Really great stuff to be working with. Grammar is always important in life. Alright, here's another fun little thing we need to do. You need both of those buttons pressed down in order to access this connector. So, what we're gonna do, and actually, I could probably just do this with one connector now that I think about it. There are some really odd spots where you can actually pick up connectors, or just anything on top of a box, for instance. Like, if I put the connector right there and I tried to pick it up, it would push me forward and I would just get dropped down into the area where the boxes are. But for some reason, if it's on the left one, and yeah, I can actually pick this up from right here, I just wanna make sure I don't fall off. You don't get pushed off for some reason. I I never understood why that is. Well, I guess technically I do. It is sort of part of getting the, getting the star, I think. I don't know. I'll have to think about that one for a little bit. Instead of, you know, just aimlessly going off of my mind and my horrible memory on this one, we're instead just gonna open the door first. <laughs> that, that would be kind of important, I would imagine. Just connect that like so, and then that might work. Uh, I guess my memory just isn't as great as I thought it would be. Right, let me just put this back over here and then remember how to properly solve connector problems like this because there's actually enough room to put the laser right there and connect this piece. Um, pff, squiggly, yeah. Is, is a squiggly block, or a Z block, I suppose. Four chambers of flying has a lot of flying to do, as you may imagine. There also has a couple of QR codes to read, too. I might just take a very quick glance around the world to go finish reading all of these. But for now, instead, what we're gonna do is get a couple of items, such as bringing this box over there-ish. Lots of ladders to go off of as well, so we have plenty of space to move. Take the jammer with us, and then jam this door on the other side, because we need to open the actual door with the box. Then take this with us, and I think that's just about everything, actually. Oh yeah, you can also jam fans, I forgot about that. Although it's technically not needed right now, but hey, it's an option, and it probably will serve some purpose in times to come within the future. All you really need to do is just bring the jammer over here. Like that connector! 
really, I don't think it serves that much of a purpose now that I think about it. Like, what really is the point of this? I don't think it's actually part of getting the star even, which it kind of surprises me. I guess it's just there to throw you off because I never really found much of a use for it. Besides standing there to look pretty, it's not really all that endearing. Right, me, myself, and our two jammers. This is the final puzzle of the area. Uh, this one can be a little slight bit challenging. We're gonna start off by bringing the jammer to this side of the door. That's pretty much the very first step that you need to take, is just make sure it's over there. For rather important reasons. And that would be so that way we can jam the door from the other side and let our clone through, just like that. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna reposition things a little bit so that way not only can we let our future selves in through here, we can also jam the minigun turret all the way out there. And that in turn will allow us to bring the jammer in the present all the way over here. And then we can use it to jam that final minigun turret in the last corridor. But of course we have to stand on this button first and foremost, otherwise we just won't make any progress at all. And now that we are finished, let's see if I remember how to do this thing. So, just wait for little buddy over there to jam the minigun turret, and there he has it, he's figuring it out. Now we just wait about two seconds, and he's jogging his way over. That will allow us to jam this minigun once more, and collect the final puzzle piece. These puzzles don't take too long if you have a general sense of what you're doing. The star, on the other hand, is gonna take some time. It is... it is quite awful. So, you need to have at least one connector out here. Just one. And there's a very specific spot of where you can get the laser source. You also need a fan. Somehow you can get a fan out here. That's somehow meaning... We can't exactly do it until we reset the puzzle, and this is actually a gimmick which I did not bother explaining, but if you hold down X, then your robot will sort of raise his hand in front of him, and if you hold it down for long enough, then you'll soon reset the puzzle after like four clicks or something. I'm gonna show off the animation in third person mode too, because it's kind of fancy. Okay, I remembered how to do this puzzle properly, so... I hope you're paying close attention. This one requires some very specific steps in order to win. Take this box and place it over the fan. And then take this box, place it directly on the ledge. Not dropping off, just enough to get it on the ledge. Then, once you're low enough on this box and close enough to the platform, grab this box. And then, you want to take it right out here, I'd say, maybe. I don't know. This might not even necessarily be part of it, in fact, I might have to just leave that box in there for the time being. The point is, you want to be up here right now, and the reason we're doing this is so that we could collect that fan that's down there, like so. Then we take it out over here, and rush towards the obelisk where that missing fan, that fan is missing that piece per se, the fan mechanism is missing its actual fan piece. All right. Now what we're gonna do is run back to this puzzle, the iron curtain behind the... And then what we have to do is move a couple things temporarily. We are gonna need to take that connector with us. We're gonna leave this box right here, which is actually quite mandatory. And we're also going to place these two boxes once again on the thing. Also what I mentioned earlier is... Well, you don't really need to necessarily have this connector on a very specific box because apparently you have to be in a really specific position in order to be pushed off by the level. Like right there, it could be on the right box, you could just grab it. But I, I don't know why that's never exactly worked most of the time, but it did work here now. 